Centuries before European explorers arrived, each year people along Monterey Peninsula's Carmel River watched large, brightly colored fish come in from the sea, then swim inland through fresh water flowing from distant mountains. South Central California coast steelhead trout. They rested in this lagoon and then began a 30-mile trek. Gaining 1,000 feet in elevation, swimming against the river's current, the steelhead found side channels and tributaries far upriver to lay and hatch their eggs. These fish are mighty, they're beautiful, but their very existence is threatened by man's quest to conquer nature with dams. Human pressure on the Carmel River began centuries ago. In 1602, Portuguese sea captain Sebastian Vizcaino sailed into Monterey Bay aboard a Spanish ship that set sail from San Diego. In 1770, Spanish missionary Unepero Serra and Captain Gaspar de Portola built a mission in Carmel and a fortress to guard Monterey Bay. In 1870, railroad barons bought most of the Monterey Peninsula, built the ornate Hotel del Monte, and subdivided the land nearby. With transportation now convenient and plots of land for sale, the population began to rise. But water wells were few and of poor quality, and it was a long trip to the river to fill a water wagon. In 1921, the San Clemente Dam was completed, but plunging 70 feet to the water below, many fish were injured or killed. Local steelhead and the equally threatened California red-legged frog have been fighting extinction for decades. Water diverted from the Carmel River to serve the Monterey Peninsula has overtaxed the river's meager flows, especially in summer months. Overpumping, combined with periodic drought, caused riverbanks to collapse. Erosion destroyed wildlife habitat and created excessive silt in the water. Steelhead and frogs are often stranded in dry pools where a river once ran freely. In 1850, an estimated 12 to 20,000 steelhead climbed the Carmel River each year. In the following century, the population dropped precipitously. California American Water began consistent data collection from 1964 to 1975. In those years, an average of 821 fish annually made it up the ladder and over the San Clemente Dam. But in 1994, only 91 fish found their way over the dam. In 1997, steelhead in the Carmel River were listed as threatened under the Federal Endangered Species Act. In 1999, the Carmel River was named one of America's 10 most endangered rivers. For decades, one could argue that San Clemente Dam's threat to rare fish and frogs was trumped by the vital role it played in the Monterey Peninsula's livelihood. In the decades since its construction, the San Clemente Dam water supply became insufficient. So in 1948, the Los Padres Dam was built 25 miles upstream to hold much more water. Meanwhile, the San Clemente Reservoir filled with sediment and now holds only enough water to supply about 100 homes. And the silt lurking beneath the water threatens the community below. The San Clemente Dam now holds back more than 2.5 million cubic yards of sediment. Uh, construction techniques used in the uh, early 20th century would be no match for a large earthquake or a maximum probable flood. So in the early 1990s, the uh, California Department of Water Resources, Division of Safety of Dams, issued a safety order on the dam. The search for a solution began in earnest. In 2006, the Department of Water Resources released studies of alternatives for the San Clemente Dam Seismic Safety Project. California American Water, owner of the dam and the Monterey Peninsula's water system, faced tough choices, all of them expensive. As a regulated public utility, California American Water was obliged to favor the lowest cost alternative, to retrofit the dam, strengthening it to make it earthquake safe. I urged the California American Water Company to pursue a strategy to relieve the pressure on the dam by rerouting the Carmel River into a new course and then removing the dam altogether. Rerouting the Carmel River will allow the steelhead to swim 
upstream without facing the current man-made ladders. Uh, the rerouting will also allow for taking down the San Clemente Dam and the old Carmel River Dam, which will allow the river to run free for 25 miles all the way to the ocean. At an estimated cost of $83 million, California American Water and the California Public Utilities Commission determined the cost would be too great to pass on to water ratepayers. But thanks to leadership from government officials, environmental groups, and California American Water, collaboration ensued that has made the plan possible. With the sponsorship of these leaders, the State Coastal Conservancy, the National Marine Fishery Service, and the Nonprofit Planning and Conservation League Foundation began working with California American Water President Rob McLean to create the Carmel River Reroute and Dam Removal Project. In my 20 years in local government, this is the most unique public-private partnership I've ever seen. All parties benefit, the environment, the river, they're the biggest winners. California American Water will contribute about $49 million to the project. The Coastal Conservancy, along with the National Marine Fisheries Service, will raise the additional $34 million from state, federal, and private sources by the end of 2012. The dollars that are going to be spent on this are really going to be spent in a way uh, that allow for a free-flowing river, uh, that really protect the downstream users and restore the habitat. After all reroute and stabilization is accomplished, San Clemente Dam and remnants of the old Carmel River Dam will be removed. After project completion, over 900 acres of California American Waters land around San Clemente Dam will be conveyed to the U.S. Department of Interior Bureau of Land Management. Rerouting the Carmel River and removing San Clemente Dam means so much to so many. It permanently removes the public safety risk posed by San Clemente Dam, which now threatens 1,500 homes and other buildings, increases the rate of sand replenishment along the Carmel River Beach, helping to sustain the dune habitat found there, aids in the recovery of steelhead trout, a threatened species, by opening up 25 miles on the Carmel River of spawning and rearing habitat for steelhead, improves habitat for threatened California red-legged frogs, and expands public land by preserving over 900 acres of coastal watershed, resulting in over 5,400 acres of contiguous regional parkland. Well, the Carmel River Reroute and Dam Removal Project is the first of its kind, a real model for the future for here in California as well as across the country. Building dams was once a triumph of humankind's ability to control nature. As our society evolves, we are learning to seek balance rather than control in our relationship with our environment. With the San Clemente Dam Removal Project, public-private cooperation will help restore the natural function of the Carmel River. It's an extraordinary opportunity to remove an antiquated dam and bring the Carmel River back to life.